Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Curator of Education, Anna Smith, and today we are excited to share with you the work of Gabriel Rico, who translates objects into statements about culture, politics, and the natural environment using the language of assemblage and mathematics. Benasher was recently able to acquire one of Rico's installations with the help of the Dallas Art Fair Foundation. It manages to be both playful and profound and will be on view in the Nasher's Corner Gallery through September of 2021. We will begin today's program with a short video which offers a glimpse into Gabriel Rico's workshop, then begin a live conversation between the artist and our chief curator, Jed Morse. We welcome your questions, which you may submit through the chat feature of this platform at any time. And now let's begin with our short video. Hola, soy Gabriel Rico. Bienvenidos a mi taller. Mi taller es un espacio que guarda una colección de objetos muy variados. Los objetos para mí son una manera para conectarme con la gente, con la historia de cada una de las personas de manera directa. Es como tener acceso a la memoria, una memoria colectiva. La serie Reducción Objetiva Orquestada es trabajar el principio de ecuaciones o fórmulas algebraicas para producir esculturas. Lo que busco con esta serie es suponer el poder creativo que tiene las matemáticas como poder creativo en el campo en el que yo me desenvuelvo, que es el arte. Es así como la pieza número 50 se produce en este taller, que es una pieza relacionada con el estado de Texas, que va desde la industrialización y todo lo que esto supone, pasando por la relación con la naturaleza y terminando con la importancia de la espiritualidad en este estado. La pieza número 50 es una reinterpretación concreta de la historia reciente de Texas, pero también que hay ciertos elementos que nos remiten a los pueblos indígenas que habitaron esta zona. Espero que puedan ver la pieza número 50 de la serie de Reducción Objetiva Orquestada 2016-2021 en el Nasher Sculpture Center. Gracias. Hi, everyone. I'm Jed Morse, Chief Curator at the Nasher Sculpture Center and am glad to have you with us for this conversation with artist Gabriel Rico. Gabriel, how are you doing? Hello, uh, I'm very happy to share with you. We're glad you're here. Yeah, so, uh, it's, uh, yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm ready to talk with you about the very special piece that I designed for you, for the Nasher, and uh, in my, in, in, in the less knowledge I have about Texas, but uh, I just, uh, it's like a, my way to interpret the history of that state, uh, the recent history of that state. Absolutely. It, it's, it's extraordinary to, to have it up in our galleries for the first time for the public to see. And um, you know, when, when we purchased it, we didn't realize that it had such a direct connection to Texas. It's part of this series of works, Reducción Objetiva Orquestada, that started back in 2015 for you of um, wall-mounted object assemblages, things that you've collected, things, natural objects that you've found, some things that you've made. And I, I wonder, you know, what is it about that, the format of the equation that, that sustains your, your interest in, in that as, a, as an art form? Um, you know, if I start, uh, all, the, all that series start when I uh, just want to create, uh, to decide to make a neon, a square root or made of neon. Once I received that square root in my, actually that, in that time I work in my garage. Uh, I I have a lot of rocks there. So just uh, by accident, I take a rock 
and in, uh, put it in in the middle of the square root. And when realize when I realize how powerful is this uh, gesture, and how because the power of this cancel the function, uh, the mathematical function in the square root. I'm very surprised how easy and how powerful uh, it was to 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 suppose uh, mathematical principles like a uh, base to create the sculptors. Uh, as I don't know if you notice, but all the equations is a is a open language for every person. Uh, so it's easy than your father plus your mother equal you uh, easy like that so in that way the equations is uh, just like a, a man a way to communicate us in between us of course and when i start to think more deeply in the, in in that uh, possibility uh, i start to work more uh, to work more seriously and to take more seriously this uh, this uh this kind of a uh, strict science yeah it's uh tony i think if we go to that first slide we, we we've got an image of it that people can see while we're talking about it and um you know the the beauty of it i think comes in that um tension between um the rational language of mathematics and um you know the associative language of art um, you know, if one attempts to read um, from left to right uh, as if it were an equation, it really highlights the, you know, the absurdity of the proposition. Um, but nonetheless, it, it, does, it does seem to have its own internal rationality or sensibility to it that, that, that is, you know, maybe beyond reason. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, about the series, the uh, Reduccion Objetiva Orquestada, is that, that that term borrows, uh, you know, the, the term is borrowed from neuroscience and quantum theory. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, you know, how those interests have um, <coughs> manifested themselves in your work, and particularly in the equation series. Of course, uh, the science, they are, uh, they are, part of uh, the same universe there where the philosophies come from or metaphysics that they, they are just another kind of expression of the human knowledge or the human experience is connected uh, to the spiritual world but in uh, in another level like the neuroscience now we know to st we start to know how deep we can go in uh, into our brains because the, the capacity we have, uh, uh, because the microscopes or the neuroscopes or um, these amazing machines. But uh, the title is just refers, is not directly connected with the meaning or the, or this branch from the science, these both branches like is neuroscience and uh, quantum mechanic is more about if you translate the title in English, the meaning is the same. But this talk about when you reduce something to something specifically objective and or or chested. So more or less is like uh, when I I do this uh, the works in this series, I reduce my experience of life in a in an equation. So it's like I reduce uh, the whole history of my, uh, uh, yeah, of how many times spend I to try to find this object, the selection of the objects, the work in the in my studio, and everything is all that things is 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 reduced in a in a piece of art in this case in a, in a, an installation, and uh, I'm I, I use the title to refer more about this than the neuroscience or. Uh, quantum mechanic yeah the 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 sense of of you know reducing the panoply of experience um mm -hmm. you know you 
moving from the work at the Nasher Sculpture Center to uh, the works where, where you are now, you are coming to us from the Perrotin Gallery in New York, where you're about to open a new exhibition. Um, and within this exhibition, you've made some pretty extraordinary new works, um, which I think include some of the largest um, of the equation series. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm curious if you can talk about um, what seems to be the largest one of those, number seven, the mural from the series, Reduccion uh, Objetivo um, Orquestada, um, which is, I mean, it seems to consume an entire wall in the gallery. Sure. Yeah, um, switch to the next slide. I think we'll, we've got a, an image that people can see. That's it. Yeah, thank you. So as you see, I mean, um, at the time when I realized and I'm about the power to suppose uh, the equations, because I really need to, I mean, I want to tell you something. The different, they are actually formals. Uh, the equations, the difference between an equation and a formal is, uh, is very simple. In, a, in an equation, all the value of all the elements uh, inside the equation is a, uh, they are uh, predicted. They, they need to be defined before you use it in an equation. And in a formula, you can play with the meaning of the uh, signs, letters, numbers. You use it to formulate uh, something. So for me, they are more close than formulas than an equation. But of course, we can say an equation is it doesn't matter. I'm just uh, sure. very interested in the maths, and I need to learn about the difference between the uh, definitions. Uh, so I don't know if you have chance to see these crazy blackboards that the scientists just cover full of uh, science and crazy maths. That is normally exactly what it reminded me of. Absolutely. Sure. So I just at that at one time, uh, like uh, five years ago, I think I really like to create something like that. I mean, it's so I'm. It's like a a very unique universe that you feel immersed in it, even if you don't understand where the signs come from, where the value are, where the all the all these crazy maths going even that i really enjoy to feel lost in this uh, visual complexity sign complexity and i just try to replicate that uh, that feeling using of course the this place that the set uh, uh and the idea to uh, of the blackboards you know like a like beginning and they are they are uh, um, cubic. I mean, not rectangle. Sorry, mm -hmm. because of course I use a, a rectangle, a wall, uh, to to define define the size of this uh, this equation. But it's it's because the the blackboards have this uh, this shape. Um, that's more or less. It's simple like that. Yeah. Is a uh, is is like if you growing the the equation uh, already you have in the nature and start to play with these uh, signs that I, I really uh, paint with my with my hand so it's basically uh, I call these uh, big equations murals first because the uh, movement in in Mexico is called muralism and uh, is more or less related with the life uh, in a certain point of a, in a political situation in, in Mexico. So this is not about the politics, but it's about civilization and it's about uh, people and it's about us like a, like a race. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was very, very logic to use uh, the term moral to start to define this big equation. Yeah. Um, Tony, let's go to the next slide, which I think is a detail of this large mural piece. And, you know, you can see the variety of, 
of objects within it. Um, this kind of, it looks like a plastic lotus flower and then, um, you know, concrete block, um, a, a used shirt, and then symbols and signs dr drawn directly on the wall. Um, if we go to the next slide, Tony, there's a smaller work that's also in the exhibition and part of the equation series. And I think people can see the kind of, the, you know, the use of the square root symbol, which you discussed about at the beginning, um, you know, as kind of the start of the equation series. And you were just speaking of, you know, the, the, the kind of political um, and historical aspects of, of muralism in Mexico, the work of, of uh, Dave, um, uh, David Alfaro Siqueiros and Diego Rivera, and, um, Rufino Tamayo. And, um, and it's interesting because, you know, the, these works and the, wor and the objects that you collect rely on the kind of broader implications of objects. You know, they're material and social and political, philosophical and, and especially metaphorical implications. Um, and also, you know, the, the works often speak to issues like environmental degradation and consumerism. But, you know, there always seems to be a really deep affection for the objects that you use within, um, you know, your, your, uh, uh, with, with, throughout your work, um, in the equation series and the installations. Um, you know, there's almost a tenderness um, for the objects. And I, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about you know, how those objects, um, how they function in your practice, in your life, and how they, they take on meaning for you? Um, I mean, the way I decide uh, to use the object is, uh, of course, it's a very personal decision. But this comes from uh, the way we live. We need objects to describe us, uh, to feel, to feel uh, us safety enough to project ourselves in our closest environment. The objects have uh, the capacity to receive our personality and then they are like a mirrors without a reflect. So you can, you can construct your person based in objects. Uh, I mean, we can start to, from the most basic, like the cloud, like the clothes and the shoes and all the things we use and finish uh, with uh, pieces of art in your house or in the museum or whatever. So it's a way to construct, uh, to build bridges between uh, between us. So uh, when I discover ontology and heuristic principles, uh, I start very more interesting in that, in that, uh, connection because I start to realize that my life, all my life, I was defined from the objects around me, from the simpleness, like the Nintendo games, uh, my bike, the, my brother. Uh, that's a tricky one huh? because we like persons, we are objects, but with personality and with blood and everything. But that's a very tricky question anyway uh, so i start to try to define my my try to use myself like a lab to express my idea about society and this is very very important for me because i really lost the control of the of the of these equations because I cannot control the feelings you f you feel when you are in front of this uh, of this object. So it's, it's, if you can recognize the crocodile and, and you come from Costa Rica or Florida, 
you have another experience with these animals than me. So it's the connection, like in the quantum mechanics, is separate like a tree of branches and it's the possibilities, they are infinite. Uh, I, I really like the flea markets. I really like the bazaars. Uh, I really like the complexity of our society. I hate minimalism. I feel, I, I don't like, I mean, it's too much sometimes. I really like the Baroque, Baroquean style of, uh, yes, style of life in some places. Uh, I like the way the cleanness in, the, in a museum, in a gallery project uh, the value of the things, but the empty spaces uh, is fills me, uh, I don't know, sad. So the, these colorful things is uh, bring me happiness, uh, bring me capacity to uh, sit in front of this uh, object again, uh, that is a computer, and talk with you. Um, yeah, that's that's more or less the idea in all this, on all the series. Uh, where I just, I just object. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tony, if we go to the next um, slide, you know, this is um, uh, a new, is, it, is, it, this, is this a new kind of branch of investigation? It, the, is the theorem a new aspect of the series of exploring this, Kind of language of you know rational language of mathematics and science and, and its intersection with art okay uh i finished to read a book about topology that is a branch of the mathematics of mathematics and i discover these beautiful theorems that just try just they just try to define the signs and letters in the in, in the in the in the same theorem because they testify each other and the mathematicians use the the, the words just to bring clarity and clearness uh, uh, to this description so i just found I want to show you, let me, this is where, sorry, because it's my, okay, I'm going to do in this, this is where the theorem come from, and it's a real one. Yeah. And I, as you see, I just changed the letters from, for, for objects, but it's a real one. So you can really use the logic or the logical way that the mathematicians use to read these kind of theorems, mm -hmm. to read this and have sense. And it's completely different logic than the other equation. The other equation is they have, you can find logic because you are uh, enough, uh, uh, yeah, you have the capacity to recognize the value of the objects and the history in the objects. But in this case, I don't use a found object. I produce all the objects. Why? Because as you see, you in this kind of theorems, uh, by the way, this image is uh, the comprobation of the theorem. The last one is the theorem. This is the comprobation. Right, uh, and it's a it's in a topological way to create groups and how these groups of objects interact. That sounds crazy, but it's our life. It's like a, how how you are in a room uh, with a, with many chairs, like I saw you in in, in the back of you. Yeah, and you and close to you is another room with other objects, and then you uh, you are you realize that you're in the middle of the building and that building is in the middle of the city and it's, 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 it's like that. So it's, this kind of a theorems is about how define the world, construct groups of objects. 
more or less is like that. So these are actually two, you know, very closely related works, the theorem and the verification. Sure. Yeah, that's great. You know, one of the things that I've been curious about is you, you see in a number of the works in the exhibition um, at the gallery right now, the, rep, the, the recurrence of, of, the, um, of the ligature AE. Um, and and I, I wonder about that, if it has, um, you know, particular meaning for you, um, mm. you know, how does, or does it just function as a, as a kind of rational symbol um, the way that, that other rational symbols like the square root sign and equal sign mm. and things like that function? Is the first uh, two letters in the world static? So <laughs> yes. I am I am an uh, an artist. So I I really like that branch of logic because the static don't define the beauty or the ugliness. It's just like the way we can administrate uh, the value of our feelings because the the shape of the things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's it. That's why I use that letter. There's a, Tony, let's, let's, there are a couple other things. Um, go to the next one. This one also is a, a work that incorporates the, the AE and a number of objects that are, are kind of um, split um, halfway by the glass panel. And then, and, in the next slide is another um, wall-mounted work that, um, you know, seems to be, um, you know, related to um, the kind of rectilinear logical um, uh, format of an of an equation or or a, a, a formula, um, but is um, but is made up of of um, brass. Uh, feathers, essentially. Sure. Um, and, and is this? It, it's part of the series uh, La Mitla de uh, Hereticus, um, or the myth of heretics. Is that right? Sure. Actually, I just uh, used the title because the first time when I show this piece, when I present this piece, the series, uh, it was in France. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, it's very logic to use. The French title. Anyway, um, I start with this series because I'm very interested in the Greeks uh, in Mitla. That Mitla is a place uh, in Oaxaca. That is one of the, the oldest places for uh, Zapoteco Zapoteco people in. Um, there in, in 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 that valley in the valley of uh, the central valleys in mexico they they was enough rich to start to have chance to think about the architecture and think about the scale so they start to uh, create uh, th that kind of designs very intricate very rectilinear, very geometrical, calm. and uh, for me was a. Uh, it's very interesting because it's it's kind of try to be closer to the nature in an intricate uh, way because the design, and I just start to use. Uh, I mean, as you can see in that mural, if you uh, take a take care of the all the feathers you're going to recognize in all that feathers made of brass they are they are just two real one yeah. uh, and i use that feathers to suppose the scale for the others uh, and it's like for me it's it's, a, it's, it's kind of refers about the importance of of the scale and the, the scale factors we take from the nature. Mm -hmm. uh, the dimensionality of our bodies is correspond to things like trees, 
or big rocks or the sea or something bigger than us or even smaller. So yeah, that is more or less the, the, the idea in this, in this piece. And then there's the sense of the multiplication of, mm -hmm. of the form um, that, that could, you know, um, it suggests could conceivably go on and on. Sure, it can be a fractal. Yeah. Um, let's go to the next slide because I'm. I, this is. I don't even know the title of this work, which, um, you know, is an installation that you made in the gallery there. Uh, the the branches and it looks like gold leaf banners. Um, uh, you know, appended to them. What is this work? And to, and tell me about it. It seems to be. Um, uh, you know, uh, a, a mural or um, a wall-mounted work that's freed itself from the wall and, and, and it's floating in the midst of the gallery. Mm -hmm. So let me start with the title that is come from a, a term the Cetis tribe use and refers to the first rate of light in the morning. Is when the you can feel the the heat of the sun in your. I mean, you can see it's the first first rate of light in the morning. The title is Due Gui, um, and this uh, work uh, is part of the of one series I call Bis Viva. Bis Viva is like the force, the life force. Uh, I use, I like this title because as you see I work I use uh, just natural materials like branches and gold uh, gold leaves. So the gold leaves is a very delicate material that I really like to frack. I mean to broke or to crack the the normal way we use the gold leaf to do, for example, Baroque art or sacred art or that kind of, uh, even frames. Uh, and I just want to start to realize what happened if I actually work with the delicateness, the delicate part of the work and suppose a destruction of the work, like part of the work, how difficult is going to be for the public to deal with uh, more or less a few part of this uh, gold leaf in the floor, uh, they going to think like that is, this is trash or not because it's gold or, you know, and that, and that's, I really like to be in that position like uh, when I visit museums or galleries or art, uh, art spaces because you rethink your position like, uh, of course, like a public, but you start to rethink the position of the materials and the power of the materials and how important it is to don't stop to investigate and question the materiality of the materials. Uh, it's inspired uh, from one of my favorite artists uh, that is uh, Felix Gonzalez Torres. And he, the series is uh, more or less like a waterfall of light and the curtains uh so yeah is there there is where this uh arts uh new uh, sculpture in, in situ has come from that's that's beautiful it's really tremendous um and i, I you know i can imagine it's it's impact in the space um really beautiful it's very interactive when the people walk in through the gallery the flow of air behind the people uh, interact with the golden leaves. Yeah. So the other people can see the movement. Even if you are close enough, you can hear it. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, a, it's like, a, I don't know, I cannot replicate the sound, but it's very delicate. And uh, yeah, so uh, I really like this level of interaction yeah. without technology. Absolutely. And the, the other works there, I mean, there's several works in, in, in the exhibition at the gallery that incorporate um, taxidermy deer. And um, 
and you had mentioned earlier <clears throat> the relationship of um, the branch and gold leaf installation to um, uh, an indigenous term for you know the first rays of light. Um, you know, there seems to be in a lot of your work a relationship with um, you know the mythologies of indigenous groups, particularly in Mexico and Central America. And the deer, I think, in my reading, it would be an extension of that as well. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, the role of mythology and um, indigenism in in your work? Sure. I mean, uh, I'm. I spent my last fifteen years going uh, be closer to some uh, uh, original. A group of people uh, more in the center and the north in Mexico because where is where I, I live and it's very healthy for my head and for my spirit to be far from the contemporary life uh, uh, and to be with a very simple philosophers they are great to that and i start to discover that the deer is uh, is repeated in many of the it's called utonawa the all the tribes come from utah arizona california to the close to jalisco and in all that uh, mythology tribes is you you will see coyote you will see birds you will see deers, you will see fox, you will see eagles. Uh, and they are very proud of that. Uh, but the, the deer is an special animal because they represent their fragility and the strongness. And that's, a, I mean, that's a, like a jing and yang. Uh, you, you can see the antlers, it looked like uh, the shape of a, of a tree, so they the deer is related with the nature in another, in a in a very direct way. Uh, in the, one of my favorite uh, tribes, that is the Wiradica, that is the Wicholes, that is they made uh, these amazing embroidered uh, art pieces. Uh, they call to the deer uh, the blue the blue brother, mm. uh, and they call, for example, the fire uh, the grand the grandfather. Uh, and it's I mean, how special is to name the fire your grandfather uh, or your their deer uh, your blue brother? So I just blow my mind and, and I start to think about that. Uh, I just need to clarify that. Uh, all the animals I use, because this is important. Uh, they they was uh, sometimes I just found like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I rent it, yes. and when uh, I I need in a specific uh, position, I work with I work with uh, uh, farms specific farms for deer. So you cannot kill a female. You cannot kill. A young, um, a young deer it need to be an adult. Need to be with uh, at least five points in the in the handlers. Uh, that suppose uh, the animal have enough time to be an adult, to have kids, to to be a being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, I'm glad you mentioned the work behind you, um, Tony. If we and there's another image of uh, another work that incorporates. Uh, the taxidermy, taxidermy deer that's also in the exhibition. If we go to the next slide, actually, we've got um, a, another work in the exhibition that, you know, is part of this series of works that you have been, um, you know, that you've been doing with um, Manolo Castro Montoya as part of the Nierica technique that he's a, uh, his taller is a master of. And I wonder if you can talk about your. Uh, your collaboration with them and this very traditional, um, this very traditional technique that you, you you're interested in reviving. 
Yes, uh, actually the name of uh, Manolo in Wirrarica is Muerite Mai. That is mean uh, ocelot, something like that kind of feline. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the language is so amazing that is so far closer to the Spanish that, that you can think like you are in Japan when you listen these people talking is so short and precise the way they use the tongue mm -hmm. not uh, because it, spanish and english is more long the sounds they are more uh, short and precise as i tell you uh i spent my last uh, 15 years uh, try to be closer with the with the mexican cultures investigate about my my past and the where I'm come from, and in that way, uh, I start to recognize the value of uh, the Eastern celebrations uh, and how Eastern is related about the to receive the spring and to pride for a good season to receive more water. And after several years of think to work with a new technique to to translate my sculptors in a two-dimensional uh, artwork i discovered this technique and uh, i just think like uh, the technique just blow my mind i mean it's so it's one of the most sophisticated things i ever seen i mean it's they use even the material they are so strange. They are. They use a, a panel of wood. Then they cover with bee wax. Mm -hmm. Like is they use like a glue to glue it, the thread, and it's not threaded. Actually, it's just push it into the bee wax. So a couple of uh, wicholes or wiraricas take like a month and a half to create these beautiful things. But trust me, I mean, if I try, I can spend two years and no, get nothing. Yeah, It's just part of their life. And, and it's it's extraordinary. I mean, it, it is, I think, difficult for people to see in the images here, or even in the work behind you, how detailed the thread work is. It's really <laughs> in, 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 incredibly... Crazy. Um, delicate and um, very fine, very fine thread work. Yeah, and, and you know they use this. Uh, they use this technique. I mean, why why I'm be allowed to work with this technique? And because it's they live uh, to the most closer city. Uh, it's like uh, ten hours by car. So they live. I mean, they live uh, in a place that you cannot go in uh, in another i mean you can use you can spend a month walking uh but they give me the chance to work with this technique because i spent at least eight years uh, going to celebrate eastern with they so they feel enough in uh, they they, uh, they know me enough to say okay you can i mean we can open our mythology and our techniques to you because your dreams, they use this technique to represent dreams, hmm. to represent the, the shamanic uh, visions. In a way, they represent my dreams, my shamanic visions. So it's not too far from the mythology they use. You can, they, they, they recognize the deer, they recognize the cactus, they recognize the rocks, of course, it's just strange to deal with the sausage or things like that. But at the end, even their dreams are crazy. So they they received it uh, very well with with any fact. and bring work to these people is is crazy necessary. They are, I mean, they need the, the job and and how. How powerful is that? I mean, I'm so happy to to give them uh, the chance to to get money. Just simple like that. Yeah, and I mean, and you know, it's a 
it's a, a long term relationship that you've built up with um, with them. And um, yeah, it's 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 really wonderful. And the, the results of it are, are really incredibly striking. Um, you know, I think uh, we're, we'll have a little bit of time for um, questions from the audience, but I did want to ask one last question. And Tony, if you wouldn't mind advancing to the next slide. There's, um, and I, I chose these because they seem to, uh, in a way, illustrate um, the dichotomy of the, of the uh, proposition of the, of the exhibition. So you, you titled the exhibition of beauty and consolation. Um, and it's, it's a direct quote from a Dutch television series, the same title, um, where um, created and hosted by the journalist Wim Kaiser, who interviewed 26 philosophers, thinkers, scientists, artists, musicians, writers, and other learned people asking them one question, what makes life worth living? I'm curious, why, why did you choose this reference um, as the title for the exhibition? Um, let me just show you this kind of, this is the kind of the representations they they do with the thread. Let me show you uh, yeah, right there. Yeah. So you can see the blue deer in the middle. Yeah. You can see the shaman in the right corner down. You can recognize the peyote and the dancers, and you can see the, the crowd and the snakes. So they represent that vision. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the title of the show. Yeah. So if, because I'm very interested in arts, uh, uh, in science, I discover one of my, one of my heroes in, the, in science is a, beautiful guy it's called leon lederman that is run fermilab in chicago that uh, is like a more or less the uh, the small brother of the cern in switzerland and uh, try to find more information about leo i discovered this uh, this series of documentary and i start to discover beautiful philosophers and scientists and artists i don't finish with all the catalog of this uh of the of the um, documentary but uh you have if you have chance uh, i recommend you to have a great sunday I, I i watched one particular episode um that was a conversation among um uh scholars in the uk which was just a fascinating conversation <laughs> And you know, you know, I mean, it's so quiet that, I mean, the film, the, we just take care of the light and the mood, even the introduction song. I mean, it's fascinating. Uh, and I think like, uh, I just like the title because it's very poetry. It's, mm -hmm. It's like uh, when you see this new piece I, I made with the with the deer uh, cover of golden arrows. Yeah, uh, it's more or less the beauty of consolation. Mm. Is uh, the beautiness in the piece give us or console? Uh, I mean, give us consolation. But it's a very tough topic. Uh, so that why, that's why the reason I decided to, to, and you know, uh, Jeff, I, for me, I cannot pretend to be an artist and then another Gabriel. I'm just all the, the same person all the time. So this is the way I discovered to share, uh, the, the, the great things I discover in my life, like this documentary, these philosophers, these writers, these artists, these scientists. Uh, so uh, in all my titles, I try to express something related with me in a more deepest or more lightest level. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it was interesting in the episode I watched, you know, the, these uh, British and some American, but who were living in, in the UK, these scholars were, um, were having a very serious conversation about um, the idea of consolation and, um, and trying to, to define what that meant for them um, and how, um, why consolation was necessary and how it related to uh, religion and uh, kind of need to, a, a universal need in human culture to um, believe in something beyond themselves. Um, you know, it's a really fascinating conversation. It's, it's, a, very, it's a very deep topic. Yeah. Uh, even to think about consolation and try to define the concept of consolation in your life, uh, the first impression I remind my mother or remind my bed, the bed I used when I was a child, the smell of my pillow. Yeah. Uh, but that's just one way to get consolation. But uh, yeah, I mean, they talk like an hour and a half about the topic. And it, it, it's, you, you, you talk about the episode with the they are all together talking about that topic is the episode you i mean is is the last one and is one of my favorite yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty wonderful um let's see we've got a, a few questions from the audience and we still got some time to 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 take a couple um okay so there's one question about um the significance of some of the recurring imagery, like the, the steak and the Coca-Cola bottle. Um, you know, do, it, th those, um, those pop up in, in, uh, in Cinquenta and in, in the work here at the Nasher Sculpture Center, but also in, in a number of others, including some in the uh, exhibition in New York. Sure, sure, those? sure. I mean, it's, it's so, uh, my relationship with this, thing is a uh, it's kind of to be very personal uh 2019 in an fair in a actually no was the last year in a the art fair in mexico city uh a critic just broke one of my pieces because she she just go closer and she just put a empty can of coca-cola in the top of my piece so the 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 sculptor was destroyed. Mm. That's the affection the Coca Cola have in my life, like an artist. Uh, but be serious, I really like to think about Coca Cola more about the glass bottle, yeah. like a sign of uh, humanity and a sign of the capacity the humans have to transform uh yeah to transmute the matter in another kind of matter mm -hmm. we cook the sun and we get glass so it's more or less a referent of our capacity like a race to create and redefine our language using technology and object and knowledge yeah. in the other mm -hmm. sorry in, a, no, in, no, the, no. in the other by the other side is obviously represent the contemporarity in our life the worst part but uh, the refreshing part too so it's like a coin is like uh, you have two faces you have the yeah the sugar you, the, you know the, the the money the industry the contamination the pollution but in the other side you have uh, this beautiful sensation that uh, start when they supposed to to use coke like a uh, medicine right uh, and it's, it's step-by-step step transform in a statement for Mexico now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about the industry of the cane sugar, sugar cane, sorry. And uh, instead 
stevia or another kind of a corn syrup. And you can go deep in that direction. You can stray in the Monsanto wall or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and the steak is the same. It's a, I don't know if you notice, but the steak is, a, is the shape of the steak right here. Mm -hmm. is have the same power than uh, the Coke. I mean, even a kid can recognize that it's a T-bone. And I just, I just like to use this kind of composition, these elements right here, uh, like a way to describe our society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more or less. Here you see the leaf is represent the nature and the connection with the nature, the fires represent the energy, the dice represent how lucky we are to be here. The A, we talk about already the letter, the bones represent our structure, the Coca-Cola, we talk about that already. And yeah, it's more or less about that. Um, another question that we've gotten is, um, you know, what in asking about the objects that you've collected, what have been some of the most powerful or interesting objects that you've collected and used in your work? Mm. <laughs> you know what? In, and in some point of my life, mm -hmm. of my career, I mean, like a real artist, I spend the most of my career uh, dealing with the uh, money, you know, and in that way, you need to be very smart, smart enough to create art with uh, nothing. Uh, in that way, I feel very connected with the Dadaism. Uh, and I figure out what, which material conflict me or give me uh, not a safe position when I try to use my capacity to define the beautiness or the ugliness and I found the branch. The branches are when a branch is in the floor in the in the ground is because the tree don't need don't don't need more the, that branch or something happened something was just the branch is broken because a big beard or a big rock or a strong rain or whatever the point is uh when the branch are in the uh, in the ground they lost the utility but they don't lose the the powerfulness uh, to conflict me hmm. so is a branch beauty or is a branch ugly is a branch more beauty than the others? Why is, how can you define the aesthetic in a branch? Uh, I've, I've found amazing this topic, you know, it's like a, this kind of things, like you cannot deal with them, even it's just a branch. Uh, it's take time to define uh, these kind of things because we live we coming from a uh, educational system where we need to define the things to feel enough uh, to feel like you are the king or you are the ruler. Uh, but in the natural world, it's not function like that. <laughs> they are just part of something bigger. Yeah, I need to say like the branch. The branches are my main material. That's great. I, I think we maybe have time to throw one last question, and um, and it's a it's it's a good one. We were talking about dreams earlier, and the question is, what is the last dream you remember? Let me think, because uh, I mean, I I have working for the last week and I don't really remember any dream for this week, but uh, I think uh, 
it was happened like two weeks ago and it's not was a nightmare but it's not a sweet dream uh it was uh, something very cubical and where i am try to figure out my place and all the architecture and all the places where i'm be change it or move it in a rear uh, yeah sense so uh yeah i think that was the the last one i remember that's great Thank you for sharing that with us, and, and thank you for sharing this past hour with us as well. It's been a pleasure to talk to you again. Hopefully, the audience has enjoyed it as well. You know, the the show opens tonight, and it sure. runs through June fifth. So, for those of you who've joined us out in 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 in, uh, in the ether and in the internet, um, you know, you have a chance to to go and see it. It'll be up through through June fifth at uh, Perotan in New York. Um, Please coming to to the Nasher to 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 see the Cinquenta equation. That's right. And if you can't if you can't make it to New York, please do come to the Nasher and, and uh, come see Cinquenta. And uh, that'll be up um, for throughout the summer. So you've got several months to to come and see that. Um, Gabriel, thank you so much for talking with us today. Uh, it's it's a pleasure as always. Amigo, my pleasure to talk with you. I hope to see you soon in person and to share more of these amazing topics that we like to talk about. Me too. Me too. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care.